as now we are in organic chemistry and then today my idea is that what called substitution reactions remember we have different reactions so my idea to them focusing at what called substitution reactions it can be reaction or reactions so mainly substitution reaction we can say that is a reaction simple reaction a reaction between it's a reaction between between molecules molecules where where atom or a group of a group of atoms group of atoms replaces or atom replaces a current current atom Current atom, current atom in the original molecule, in the original, in the original molecule. This is the current atom in the original molecule. Now, after understanding the definition like that, of course here we are, like we are replacing something. You bring one thing, then when you bring the other, it's like when, for example, you have, let me use an example, you have, for example, R X, then maybe you bring Z, if you are going to react together. That situation where you're going to see, for example, you get R Z, then this one remaining there, the our X, like that, there we shall say we are replacing, and then we are doing what we call substitution. Now, leaving the definition, you verify the question is asking you definition, you come types of substitution reactions. So there are mainly two types. We have that one known as electrophilic substitution reaction, then nucleophilic substitution reactions. Now, when you consider electrophilic substitution reaction, we are seeing what you call an electrophile attacking now. Electrophile is one which is going to come in to cause the replacement we are talking about there. So here we have to understand what we are calling an electrophile. This one, we can say that this is an electron, an electron deficient, deficient what? Deficient species. Electron deficient what? Species. The one which is lacking electron. This one is lacking, lack what? Lack electrons, lack electrons. Take an example if, for instance, I have something like that in chemistry. If I have something like that, me appearance of this one implies that electrons are needed. But again, when we count in nucleophilic, here we are seeing, we are saying here this reaction, this substitution reaction involves, involves what we are calling an electro, an electrophile. It involves an electrophile, which you are saying is an electron. Deficient what species in simple terms we can say that electrophilic substitution reaction is simply a reaction that involves the displacement of a functional group by an an electrophile. You are replacing a functional group by an electrophile. But when you come to this one, this reaction is going to involve this reaction is going to involve what we are calling nucleophile. Involves nucleo called nucleophile. Now the difference between the nucleophile and electrophile here we are seeing that this is an electron rich species electron rich electron rich species electron rich species and this one we are seeing it now getting what we are attacking so in simple terms nucleophilic substitution reactions we can say that this is simply a reaction where a possibly charged or partially possibly charged atom or group is attacked by a nuclear what? a nucleophile so what matters is talk about a nucleophile and talk about electro electrophile. Now after looking at that, our main focus is going to be on nucleophilic substitution what? reactions. There are major two types of nucleophilic substitution reactions. One of them we are calling it substitution, nucleophilic substitution by molecular. Then another one is uni what? Unimolecular. Uni unimolecular. That one is what we are calling the SN1. And this one is by by molecular, but both of them are substitution what? reactions. The difference which is going to arise here, we are going to see only one species, one species, 
to what one species at the what at the slowest what at the slowest step we step we are going to see one species and for this one we are going to see two two species i'm going to show you what we are meaning two species at the slowest what at the slowest step or okay, that step when you are forming an activated complex now this implies that the the the, the order for this one why we are called by molecular molecularity like that this one is having now order two when you come to another topic of chemical kinetics of the two species then when you come for instance here we're going to see like when you have like chloro chloromethane plus maybe sodium hydroxide we are going to discover that here we are going to form an alcohol methanol plus some sort of sodium what sodium chloride now that kind of what this one is going to fall under SN2. Then when you come this one, we shall talk about something like okay? this one. Remember, is a primary alkali what? Primary alkali halide. This one here. Then when you come to this one, we shall see something like such, for example, such three. Then then we have three there. Then for example, that that tertiary alkali halide. And if you are going to combine it with sodium hydroxide, here we are going to see that we are shall still form. Our sodium hydroxide here should be in a solution state and remember the sodium hydroxide should be very dilute. Similarly here it should be in a solution state and very dilute. So I was saying here we shall obtain our our alcohol steel plus sodium what? Sodium chloride. If it is bromine, it will be sodium sodium bromide, iodine and so on. Now you want to look at why we are saying this one is SN2 and this one is SN1. SN1. So when you come here in the, our SN1, let us try to see the details. I'm going to take an example of this tertiary alkali alloy. This one we are putting in the presence of aqueous or aqueous sodium hydroxide. So we have a solution state, but you can even use the silver. This is an option. Don't don't confuse that the two must be there. We can either use the silver hydroxide or sodium hydroxide. We can even use the potassium what? Potassium hydroxide. And we are saying our product here is going to be the other one which we, we have talked about there. Our product is going to be like that. Then the mechanism is always going to give us a clear image. But now when you have this one, sodium hydroxide and ethanol, remember, remember this one is substitution. This one we will sub, substitution, don't forget that, we are replacing. But again, if you are putting sodium hydroxide the solution, the presence of alcohol, like ethanol, and some heat or reflux, here instead again we are going to get an alkene. Don't forget that. Here we shall obtain an, an alkene instead of that what? Of that type. So you may confuse the condition is here with these conditions here. These ones are taking us to substitution. These ones are taking us to, to elimination. Actually, this one we shall be eliminating. This one is an elimination what? An elimination reaction. And we are saying here the heat must be low. The condition is which we are going to talk about for for substitution, the heat, low, low heat or temperature, and the sodium hydroxide must be dilute, dilute sodium hydroxide, don't forget that. Then we have to become careful with the conditions here. Sodium hydroxide here is accompanied with a lot of water. So our much water here is one which is going to favor our substitution. But the moment you even if there is sodium hydroxide and then you change the solvate, here what matters is the fact of solvate. The solvate here is ethanol to favor elimination. The solvate here, which are not even reflected on the equation here, but it is there. Water is there. Being man is going to favor sub substitution. Don't confuse the two. The mechanism are going to be different. When you take this mechanism of elimination, it's going to be different. Mechanism of substitution is going also to be Define. Don't forget the heat must be little and the sodium hydroxide must be dilute. Now let us try to look at the mechanism. When you are looking at our mechanism, majorly we are going to begin by breaking our tertiary alkali halide. So we have our tertiary alkali halide here. This one is going to break down, but the reaction is reversible and we are going to obtain what we call a carbocation here or a tertiary. Carbonium ion plus chloride what? Plus chloride ion. Now after that one, let me try to display it properly. So it means we have a methyl group here. 
Then we have our carbon there having now positive after this one going away. Electrons are taken and this one is going to be like in some electrons. Then here we have our our now CH3, another one, and even here we have another CH3, like that. Then what are we going to see there? We are going now to bring now, remember we have we had the sodium hydroxide in our mechanism. So meaning the sodium hydroxide which we had here, which is dilute, the aqueous one, it is going to break down fully to form the sodium ions plus the hydroxyl what? Hydroxyl ions, like that. So what matters here now, this one is going to work as our our nuclear nucleophile, electron what? Electron rich. To attack this one now, this substrate here. So what we are going to see here, our OH now, our OH here, now is going to attack this one here, like that, but specifically attacking the carbon. Then when it did, that one is going to when that one attacks, automatically we are going to have substance let me try to put it here after this one attacking we are going to be with ch3 then ch3 then we are seeing this body now forming and then we had already our ch3 here so now this kind of formation here is going to which is going to give us now what we call our our activated complex what i'm saying here now members we are forming a carbocation here tertiary because there is some this this bond is going to break of the carbon chloride bond such that we form here our chloride ion then this implies that this one is going to work as our zero waste what our zero waste step then we are forming the first activated complex this one here and there is some activation energy which we have overcome there activated so we are, so we are forming a related complex and then we are overcoming the first activation energy as we are going to show you on the diagram then after that we are seeing that i'm going to represent so far what i've written here on my diagram remember here now i have my tertiary alkali halide the space is not enough but i have it there and then it is being added to now okay. the one from the sodium hydroxide now at this step here I'm having my tertiary alkali halide like that. I have it like that. And then I have here my chloride beginning to do what? To break off. Let me even make it here. This one is breaking off. As it's breaking off, this is what we are representing here. We are going to form this. When we form that, it means we are going to come here and we represent it here. We are forming now a carbocation or the tertiary carbonium ion, but there is even some kind of chloride which we have formed. We are saying that this one is going to become now our activated what? Activated what? Activated complex. Where we are going now to transfer it. This is a transition state actually. Transition state one, this one here. And then now we are going to be with transition state two here. When our carbocation we have formed, this is what we have illustrated from here. We are moving from this to this. So we are moving from that to this one here. Then afterwards, we are seeing at this point the, the tertiary carbocation, this one here, is going to be attacked. And then we are seeing OH bond coming. A new one is forming. Then at that point there, we are seeing we are developing a second activated what? Second activated complex. So we have two complexes, and that is the second transitional state. So we have a second transitional what? state. This one is transitional state one. When the chloride is breaking off, then we have a second transitional state here. When the OH bond is what? Is forming. So we have two bonds breaking. The bond of the chloride and then the bond of... So we have... Two bonds here. The bond which is breaking, that is carbon chloride, and then the bond which is forming, that is carbon or H what bond. Then from there, we are seeing that we are only rotating on one thing, the substrate, one species, the substrate at the slowest state here. This one, remember, we have called this one our slowest. So at this point of conversion of this to this, that one we are going to be with what we call the slow or the slow what the slow state. And there is only one chemical species. Being one chemical species, when you come back, this section is why at the start here, we said there is one chemical species. 
which chemical species is which one one chemical species one chemical species and that species is what we are calling the substrate the substrate and which substrate is the one which has given is going to turn into the product and there now this reaction is going to be with the, what we call unimolecularity unimolecularity and being with unimolecularity we say it is uni unimolecular and because it involves replacement we say it is substitution so it is a nucleophilic substitution unimolecular unimolecular is being represented by what by one and this is now our energy diagram which is very very vital now leaving that aside now, before we leave that, we are saying now the product which we are going to form here is going to be our alcohol. And our alcohol is going to be tertiary what? Tertiary alcohol. And this is our product. Our product. Remember now, we have a product here, which we are not indicating. So we have a product here, which is a tertiary, is a tertiary alcohol now, our product there. So our reactants are here. Don't forget that. Reactants. This, so this one, I can say reactants are and here we have our our product then we have two transitional state one transitional state don't forget we place it at this point this one here transitional state one that is when we are converting the tertiary carbonyl into a carbocation tertiary carbonium ion that is transitional state one then we have transitional state two that is when we are combining now our carbocation or carb, tertiary carbonium ion with OH now to form our, our product here so we have two transitional states and we have two activation energies, this one and then this one there. So take a note of that. Now, members, leaving that, let us come to what we call SN2 mechanism. Here, we are going to see this is a primary alkyl allied. We have been dealing with the tertiary. Remember, even the secondary, this one has been tertiary, but even the secondary can do the same thing. Secondary ones, as we are saying here, secondary one can do SN1 and SN2. But it always takes SN1 because when it's taking SN2, you always see that there is a lot of steric what? Indirect. So it, we end up having the mechanism for SN1. So my consideration is going to be on SN1, SN1 of tertiary carbonyl and then SN2 of primary. So when you come to primary, the mechanism here is going to differ a bit. Remember, this one is aqueous, and we said it is dilute, and we said it is much water. Don't forget that much water. So here we are going to get still an alcohol. Our alcohol here is going even to be ethanol, like that. And our ethanol then plus sodium what? Sodium bromide. Now in our mechanism here, we have in now our sodium hydroxide. Sodium hydroxide breaking down to form like that. Then from there we have our our CH2, then we have our BR, then we have our CH3 here. And what happens is the hydroxyl ion here now we are having our hydroxyl now with a lot of electron crowd. So this one is going to attack this one. We call it back side what attack. Then in the new course we are seeing even this one is going to do what? To break off. So now we are going to discover that here we have the OH bond forming like that OH bond forming at the same time the bromide bond is breaking what is breaking off now this kind of arrangement here that we are calling activated what activated the complex then from activated the complex we shall get our product which is going to be now our alcohol like that plus our BR negative which will combine with the we shall have now our sodium plus the BR from what you call the sodium what the sodium bromide now members when you look at this kind of arrangement if we transfer to our energy diagram here we shall have our reactant here our reactant remember is H, it is H2 BR plus our OH don't forget that then this one what are we seeing we are seeing we are going to form at this point here. We are going to form our activated complex, which was now which was like that. This one is breaking off the BR as OH is forming. And then we have our methyl group there. This one is our activated what? 
activated complex. Don't forget that. Activated complex. Then here we are going to form our product. And our product is going to be CH3, CH2, or H. Now in this case we have one transitional state, not like the other side where we add two transitional, transitional states. Now, why, when you look at the two mechanisms, the S1 and the S1, S2, don't forget that, started with S1. In the S1 here, the backside attack is impossible. You cannot bring, otherwise, if I'm very straight, the thing will be like this. The thing will be like that. Like that. And then we add our CL. It was very easy to do like this. And then we bring our own pairs to attack now here, like that, and the other will go away. This chemistry is very, very what? Very, very wrong. Why? Here we have a lot of repulsion. We have what we call steric what? Steric hindrance with a lot of electron what? Repulsion. Therefore, this kind of backside back attack is not allowed. It's not allowed by the molecule. So, the only option which is there is to first break off this one. This explains why we said now, you first get now, if I'm illustrating, you got this one like this, and then you first did like that, in SN1, like that. Why are we doing like that? Because of now, the steric what? Steric hindrance, which will not allow this nuclear to come and attack directly the what? The carbon. But when you come to this one, the SN2 mechanism, SN2 mechanism. By the way, we are not even specified why this one is SN2. This one is SN2 because we have two species. The one who are coming and the one who going away. Those are two species. OH, then we have even the BR. This one is going away, this one is coming. So because of these two species, that one becomes order two, and that one is by molecularity, by molecularity, which will give it now order two if you go to chemical what? Chemical kinetics. And it makes it become SN1, SN2. Now, what we are saying in SN2, what we are going to discover, that the backside attack is possible. Backside what? Backside attack. Backside attack is possible. Why is it possible? We see now Lacy, Lacy steric what? Steric indolence. And therefore, this explains why we are saying this one, the only pair as all the electron cloud can attack here. And then the other one going off, which is impossible here. So try to note that when you are doing the mechanism. Some of you just do as you do what you want. Then it is advisable to use your own pairs, like here, where we it's advisable to use your own pairs here to, to do the work properly than using a negative. Then in two, in SN1, the, the nuclear fire is coming from any front here. You can see this arrow. Don't take it from behind as books are saying.